Uh, Adrian has a flat, so what we're gonna do is we put these things behind here. He's got his gloves on. I carry those gloves. That's why I carry nitrile gloves. So you want to flip that lever? I'll hold the frame. Just flip the lever. Yeah, put those down. You don't need patch. You got a tube? Yeah. Okay. You don't need no patch kit. All right. All right. So all you do is this is now out. So maybe I should wear the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna switch. Adrian's gonna watch because he doesn't do this very Welcome often. To the expert. He doesn't do it very often, so we'll put this on the channel for the boys. I'll add some other clips to it, but Paul is gonna take all of that. I'll enhance the audio because that iPhone audio is not that great. So uh, this is why I carry nitrile gloves, guys. It will keep your hands clean. I took my white gloves off and I'm putting these on. Adrian had them on. You got them off? Okay, yeah. good. So, it doesn't take a whole lot of time since you already, so you want to patch when you're home. That's why I said, you don't want to patch on the road unless you have multiple flats. All right. So the first thing we did was we shifted to the biggest gear, the smallest cog in the back. It doesn't matter what chain ring you're on, but ideally you want to be in a small chain ring. So we shift all the way down there so you, you don't have to wonder how to line up the chain when, you, when you're putting the wheel back. We flip the lever on the other side. You don't need to adjust. You just flip it, it comes out. The brakes are open, we flip the brake thing to open it. And all I'm gonna do is lift the frame. See it, the wheel's already out, lift the derailleur, pull it back, and the wheel comes up, hold your frame. If you're doing that alone, just lay the frame on the, pin to my frame, Paul, right there on the ground. You mm -hmm. lay your frame down, yeah, don't touch it, just, okay. just film it. Okay. If you're doing it alone, you would lay your frame down like that and let the pedal be on the ground while you work on your tire. You can come back to me. That's the way you do it. If you have nobody to hold it, don't lay it down, Adrian, just hold it. Just bring it over here. When you have people around, most people, most riders will hold it. First thing is, you don't need this. This is garbage. This is garbage. You don't need that. You don't need that little thing down that they screw down there. You don't need it. That's all from shipping standards. That's why they do it. With a Presta valve, no dirt's gonna go in there. So you're good. Now, you actually, this is a foldable tire, I can tell. It's not a wire bead. So you need one skewer. You can keep these two at home when you get home. All right. You don't need to travel with that. You take one skewer, lift the tire. Look, because it's foldable, look how easy that is. That's it. That's why you only need one in your bag. Save yourself the space. It's not about the weight in that instance. You pull the thing out, pull your tube out. The challenge now is Making sure, I usually keep my tubes, but chances are this is a small hole that caused this flat. Now, if it's a big cut, you can fold it up, put it in your jersey. I'm going to see if there's something stuck in the tire. You have to be careful. You run your hands inside just to make sure whatever caused the flat is not in there. Ah, there it is. Film it. That's what caused this flat. The glass. Got it? Okay. That's what caused this flat. I'm going to throw it in the grass. The good thing is, look. It cut the tire and it worked its way into the tube. Right there. So he's got a bit of a, the tire is still usable because the tube won't protrude. So it got in and it pinched it. The good thing was, as soon as he had the flat, he stood up. He took the weight off. Hey, check out that horse. He came to see us. <laughs> yeah, come back. But this is what, so what happened guys is, what happened here, it's been raining it, the road is a little damp, so the glass stuck to his tire and it worked his way in because of water. So whenever it's wet like that, and there's nothing he could have done because we didn't go through a lot of glass. It's just people, people throw bottles on the road, cars drive over it. There's, there's just a, one speck. It wasn't a bunch of glass, but because it was wet, it worked its way into your, your tire. The tire is still good. It's still usable. It didn't go all the way through the tire. Yeah, so your tube won't come out. It went enough to where it cut your tire. If there had been a hole, then I would put a boot in there. That's why you cut the old tire. Remember I showed on the film? You cut an old tire, I have a boot in my patch kit. That's why you carry some of these come with boots. So now that we found what caused the flat, I don't have to worry about his new tube having another flat. If we hadn't found that, it would have still been in the tire. You, you, you get what I'm talking about? That means if I hadn't gone around it, it would have still been there. We put your tube in there, boom, another flat. Actually the new one. Yes. That's how important it is to find what, this is, this is good footage, my brother. You need to be a videographer. <laughs> this is excellent. I was thinking about doing this for the channel. I just didn't know when I would have the time to do it. But this is actually good that you had this flat today. 
No, I, I, this on my list. This is something I was doing. When you, you drive, you're riding down the road, you have a flat, now what? That's the title of the video. So, what you've seen here today makes you an expert in flats because always, always find out what caused it. Sometimes you can't, but just make sure it's not in your tire, just like we did. And you saw how careful I was going around it. That is important. If you don't do that, then you would have had another flat. Sometimes you don't find anything. That's okay, too. It just makes you go all the way around. And another trick. See how his tire, I don't know if it's accidental or not. It's always important that you put a logo where the valve is. The reason is, when you have a flat, it's good to, to gauge, okay, where on the tire did it happen? So if you find a hole in the tube here, you would come to the tire right. and then find that that spot. That's the reason. So always line up your decals with the valve. Man, something's smelling on those horses. Let's hurry up. So now we're good. So now you see how I'm doing it? And I thank God that he has a foldable tire because we had a buddy that rode with us a while ago on another ride, Andy, and uh, he had a wire bead. Man, it took two people to get it off the, the rim. Yeah. Whatever dollars, a few dollars you save is not worth it. <laughs> wire beads, uh, they're great if you put them on a trainer tire or something, but I wouldn't go on a road. I have one at home I haven't used for that very reason. Because I had it for a long time. And I, once I started using foldables years ago, there's your cut. Yep. So the tire is still usable. The chances of something going through there is slim to none. So yeah, anytime you're on a wet, wet ride or a wet road, it's more like a damp road. Because when it's really raining, it washes that crap away. Yes. But because it was damp, it stuck to your tire. And that's why I mentioned in another video that when you go through a lot of glass on a wet road, you want to stop, spin your tire, and rub it off. And get that stuff off. Yes. So now what we're going to do is... Oh, you got a pump. Excellent. I've never used this. Oh, is that a, is that a, that's for your... Yeah, it's got a shredder valve on it. This is all loose. Let's see. Oh, man, that's a tiny pump. I hope it works. So, is it a shredder or a Presta? Yeah, it's a it's shredder. Got both on it. Okay, which one is this? This looks like a shredder. How do you get that off? I think it just opens up. Yeah, you gotta hold that, I guess. I think I gotta hold that. Yep, there we go. So you, 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 what you want to do, if you have both valves, you want to have this set up for the valve on your wheel. If this is a Schrader, oh, you just open it up and it changes? Yeah. Oh, that's very innovative. What is this, Porsche? All right. I'm not sure, we'll see, I've never used it. It's not getting in there, so something's up. Oh, you do that, okay. That's very innovative, let's see. So you pull that out, stick that in. There we go. I think that's how it works. Let's see, that's a short shaft. And yeah, it's working. There's a little bit of air getting in there. Now, once you get to where you get a little bit of air in there, we're going to check to make sure the, 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 the tube is not pinched in the bead. You haven't used this pump before, have you? First time. Uh, okay, you see what he said? Hold that. He said this is his first time using this pump. As a rule, you buy something for the road, even if you have to take a good tire at home and air it down and test it, make sure you test it before you bring it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look to make sure the tube is not pinched in the bead. I put a little bit of air in there to where the tube is round. Because if you don't do that and it's pinched, you can blow your tube. So normally when we do these things, it doesn't take this long. We're just going through this because of the, because Paul is filming. But well, usually we're in and out in no time, but this this is the process. And I actually practiced this years ago at home with a perfectly good wheel, one of my spare wheels. I practiced changing. This is something you need to do. I practiced changing the tire. And, and Adrian, you need to do it. If you got another pair, set of wheels, yeah. and when you have t downtime, you're sitting watching TV or whatever, yeah. air it down, take out the tube, put it back in, get to where it's second nature. Yeah. a little shorter than I'm used to. I think I'm going to use mine. This is a little short. Right. Yeah, it's just you don't have enough leverage to really get a lot of air in there. I mean, it's a good idea. It's a little short. Yeah, it's a little too short because you just wouldn't get the tire hard enough. Okay, here, let me do this. You got yours? Yeah. Now, this guy on the other hand, the pocket rocket from Topeak, the shaft is... Uh, Look at that. Yeah. 
and it still fits in your jersey when it folds. So you need that leverage. So now you will see the difference. Let me just put this on there. And you see your valve was bending a little bit with that guy. Yeah. So I don't know. That may not be. That came out. There we go. You see the difference? I have more leverage. It's easier for me to work it. So I don't think I would go much smaller than the Tupi. So There's a good advertisement for Tupi. That would send the channel. <laughs> Watch out, my bike's behind you, Paul. Be careful for the trip. I'll put some Gorilla Glue on here. Mine doesn't come out like that. Paul told me about Gorilla Glue. I'd heard about it, I'd seen the ads, but I thought, oh, they're just advertising. That bad boy works. I was trying to repair a tripod, but the arm had broken and it had a spring in there. So imagine you're trying to glue something and the spring's pushing against it. And that bad boy, within five seconds of putting Gorilla Glue on there, it held. <laughs> Even with the spring push, I was like, man. So I started using it for all my projects. I worked on this shoe, I used Gorilla Glue. And it's, it came in gel form. So you use it and it doesn't dry up in the, the head of the tube, you know? Yeah. Ah. We're good, we're good. Thank you. <laughs> no, we're good, thank you. We're good, we got everything. Just had a flat tire. Where are you cycling from? Uh, we're cycling from uh, Spring, well, actually, what's the air? Klein yeah. to a uh, Tomball. <laughs> Yeah. Get over here, no, we went through the woodlands. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're good. Okay. We just we just ran into some glass on the road, that's all. Thank you for stopping. Alright. I don't know why this is coming off. Why does it come off? We're gonna have to glue that. Ah. Alright, there we go. Once it gets to where it's hard now, it's, it's like it takes more effort. Paul, I think you should put some Gorilla Glue on the gray part and slide that aluminum piece back. This is a pain when you pump it and it comes out like that. Ah! Ah! I don't know, man. See if you can put some more air in there. My arms are tired. The more the better. Okay, just put that to the side. We'll clear it up. <laughs> Take care. Can't. You feel the difference, right? Yeah, that thing's coming off. Mine doesn't come off, so he just needs to glue it. Then the glue came out. Once you get to where you can't do more, you're good. Yeah, just put pull it down, down to the to the ground. Push it down, I mean, to the road. That way, it just comes off. Yeah, it just comes off like that. Tighten that bad boy. Okay, you can give Paul the pump. Okay. Let me straighten that thing. Hold your bike. Let me straighten the valve. The valve head's a little bent, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten it. The small pump, when I was using it, bent it. See? I straighten it a little bit. You don't want to get too crazy. But there we go. That's good. That's why you don't need the black cap. If, a, if dust gets in there, it wants to be in there. <laughs> exactly. It's not, you know, it wants to be, it belongs. I'm sorry, this one goes this way. So now the reason why we lined it up with the little chain ring, I don't have to remember now where it was. I, I mean, on the smallest cog. And even in racing, all the, the people changing wheels, they expect it to be here. So when the riders have a flat, that the, that's the first thing they do. They shift to this cog, the biggest ratio. Now, something I was going to tell you here. This is a little loose. I'm going to tighten it. You always want this skewer to be the where when you do it, you have an indentation in your hand. Yeah. Okay? Because if it's too loose, it will start ticking when you stand. And then sometimes it can affect your shifting. You need to have a little bit of effort on it. See, that's good. When you close it. So now you want to you want to go ahead and shift. We're going to lift the bike. You're going to shift so I can put it in a reasonable gear. Shift. Get in the middle. Get it yeah, you don't, yeah, good. That's good. You don't want to start off in that gear. Hit the brakes. 
That's why you do that. That's why they push the pros on the road. Because they're in that gear. They put their wheel on there, they get on it, they push them to give them momentum. Because they didn't get a chance to shift out of it. This would have been on your hands. Instead, it's on your nitrile. So, cheap insurance. Put a pair of nitrile glass. I bought these on eBay. I bought a pack. Yeah. So I have a box at home. You're ready to go. Close your brakes. Then you snap it. Make sure it does not touching. That's why you snap it. You're good. Now get all your stuff. I keep the tube. I don't throw the tube away because you got one little hole from that glass. Yeah. You can patch that at home. And with, I don't usually carry the box, but you have a box, so stick it in there. What I would recommend in the future is you take the tube out of the box, put it in a plastic bag. Yeah. The plastic bag can move. You can change the form. You can change the space it takes up. Look at that. Yeah. You can't do that with that box. And the reason you want to put it in a plastic bag, things that rub the tube over time can put a hole in your spare tube. The plastic bag protects the tube. So only put the tube by itself in a bag. Don't let it be rubbing against other hard objects. Cause then when you need to use it, it will, it will be yeah, it will be useless. Thanks, buddy. So just put up your stuff. Let's get out of here. We're done.